This is where the ancient cities and medieval civilizations emerged and disappeared. This is the cradle of great ideas, a place where science and arts prospered, the crossroads of trade and the boldest ideas. What is Central Asia like today? What do the countries in the region have in common? What is the cultural and genetic code of the peoples living in this part of the world? Stay tuned with Central Asian Guide to find out. Plant with medieval manufacturing technology. Traditional Samarkand paper from mulberry trees. Kazakh athlete and horse breeder. The petroglyphs were an important form of pre-writing symbols used in communication and made on stones. Ancient records were also made on leaves, wood bark, animal skin, bones and silk fabric. Despite such a variety of materials, each of them had many shortcomings or was expensive. Chinese invention of paper by a servant of the Chinese imperial court named Kai Lun 19 centuries ago changed everything. The method was simple and affordable. The raw materials used were the wood and old rags. After processing the turned into a material suitable for writing, which easily replaced a heavy parchment and fragile papyrus. No matter how hard the Chinese people tried to keep in secret an advanced technology, it became the property of the Arab world first. The paper production was established in Baghdad, and then it penetrated into Central Asia. And a thousand years after the invention appeared in Europe, although today the paper industry is one of the most developed in the world, there is a factory located in a suburb of Samarkand, which preserve this technology to present day. This is the Siab River. Siab means spring water. River never runs dry. Therefore, about 2,000 water mills were located along the Siab River in Samarkand. These mills were involved in processing the flour, oil, soap, ceramic clay. They produce iron, the pill of the rice. We make paper from mulberry tree. We cut tree branches every year. The next year, they're grown again. We do not cut the trees. We only cut the branches and save the trees. We don't destroy environment and the tree grows well. So tree branches should soak in water for several days and then you can remove the bark. That's how the bark is removed. As you can see, that the wood skin is brown and it is pure white inside, so you need to clean it with a knife. This is after we clean the top brown layer. Here it is, please, it's ready. Here you can see the fibers, they're long, thin, but very durable. The next process is cooking. We cook four or five hours. It becomes soft. Here it is. It must be cut, cleaned and boiled. And the fibers get off well. Now you need to grind it. And for this, we use a water mill. Here, for example, branches of the mulberry tree we need these things for our work. Here bark is boiled. Here we have the water. We want to build an oil mill there. Therefore construction work is underway. The embankment was built here. Now we are building a mill. We will set the wheel and extract the oil. Earlier, Zarif Mukhtarov was a successful pottery expert, but a couple of decades ago he was fascinated with the idea of reviving old Samarkand paper, or the so-called silk paper, and managed to reconstruct the paper factory. This is the Siab River. It runs over the entire territory. It looks like a small island. This is Conigal village. Conigal means a clay mine. The road nearby is like the old Silk Road. The caravans passed and carried paper all over Europe to Russia and other countries from here. When I was engaged in ceramics, the UNESCO held a large conference in the city of Kagan. The participants discussed the Samarkand paper and its advantages at that conference. I began to study the history of this paper in books. I started to meet with scientists. 
We experimented for five years at home, and then we built this mill to develop this production. There are about 400 water mills that made paper in Samarkand. Now there is only one mill, which we rebuilt. Almost 200 years later, we revived the technology of the Samarkand paper production, and we are now developing this kind of folk art for about 20 years. The most valuable manuscripts preserved due to Samarkand paper are the manuscripts of Al-Biruni, Ibn Sina, Al-Khwarizmi, who studied astronomy, medicine, physics and mathematics. Techniques for manual labor mechanization have always existed. Pack animals were used sometimes for this purpose. Natural elements as wind and water were used sometimes. Earlier the bark was crushed by hand and then our ancestors came up with such equipment to facilitate work. And now we'll see how our mill works. This is our equipment that crushes the bark which boiled for four to five hours. Here now it is crushed for eight to ten hours before becoming a homogeneous mass. It is called a gruel. When our gruel is ready, we take it and go to our water tank. This is our chief craftsman of paper manufacturing, Jakob. Here we mix with water. This is the paper of 8-3 format. You see the fibers lie in each other, intertwined with each other. Water dries, then it can be separated from the form. When we have about 50 to 100 pieces, we press under them. This is our press. We hold them under the press 24 hours to rid the raw material of water and give a strong density to the fibers. Then we will take it off. And the next process, drying, begins. See, it's wet like material. Now you can stick it on the board, on the wall, on the glass with a smooth surface. And so, when it dries, it will be possible to remove it. But as you can see, it is rough, so it's not smooth. We have a very important and last thing to do for this. We need to polish paper. Masters work at the Conigal factory for decades and do not want to change their activities. What they are doing is important for them. We're proud to have restored the forgotten method of making paper. We will try to be known all over the world in every possible way. We hope that now this production can have a chance for a new long life. This is also our master for the production of paper, Mahmoud. He has been working for a long time. He's a true professional. Mahmoud, what are you doing? Are you polishing? Yes, I'm polishing the materials. Well, how's work going? Fine, we have a lot of things to do. Well, continue your work then. The more we polish the paper, the better it becomes. The quality of paper sheets immediately grows. The sheet is already polished. Now I'll take the other one and continue the work. For example, every day I must polish no less than 80 or 100 sheets. I am glad that I also contribute to the revival of this technology. <laughs> And why do we polish? We polish so that the paper becomes smooth. It also increases the density of paper. And it was possible to write on both sides only on summer kind paper thanks to polishing. For polishing we use stone agate, shell and the horn. Now we compare. This is our chemically bleached paper. Preservation is approximately 100 years. Why 100 years? Because it is made of different wood. This, for example, poplar, pine and other trees. 
but they have very short fibers. Therefore, glue and chalk are added here. Chalk is a filler. When the term of the glue or chalk expires, the paper cracks, turns yellow and sizzles. And this paper has a purely ecological, natural color. Preservation is about 2,000 years. Mouse and worms can eat this paper. They cannot eat this paper because their stomach does not digest silk. Paper is used for the restoration of ancient manuscripts, for miniature artists and for calligraphers. The so-called silk paper is suitable not only for writing and for artistic painting. You can make even clothes from it. Here we can get acquainted with our products. These colored papers, which we paint in natural color. This is henna, walnut, pomegranate, indigo. We use the onion peel. These are cosmetic bags with embroidery. Clothing with hand embroidery is also made from this paper. We use the natural dye. For example, here it is a black mulberry tree. This is a male gown dyed with walnut. Here you can see embroidered women's dress with natural dye from matter root. We also have dolls made in the papier-mâché technique. We have various theatrical masks, notepads. and even embroider on paper. This is Suzanne technique. This is hand embroidery and you can even wash it. These are the postcards. You can write here. It is written Samarkand. Suzanne ornament. This is an interesting way how you can use postcards. Here is the family. Miniatures are painted on paper. You see it is processed with egg white. This is very delicate work. We also use natural dyes, watercolors, gouache. The pigments are miniature. The main theme here is the caravan. Now you can see the egg. It is also papier-mâché, hand-painted. Our girls paint them. The girls who work at the plant create beautiful pieces of art. They have such a creative atmosphere in the studio that even Zarif's granddaughters are happy to work with them. Our girls work, draw and sew here. Good afternoon. Today is her birthday. She's eight years old. This is our embroideress. Her name is Nagina. She makes wallets, handbags, cosmetic bags, big and small handbags. This is Zilola. She paints with natural dyes, watercolor and gouache. And this is Olula. She's just doing the covers for the passport and she makes purses, business cards, hats and bags. Mer Hibon also learns to draw. She comes here after school. Have a nice day, everyone. This is a girl named Rukhshona. She has been working with us for a long time. Rukhshona, how are you? Fine, thanks.
I have been working here for two years already. My task is to clean the bark and prepare it for cooking. To be honest, our work is not so difficult and I like to work with natural material. The craftsman's wife worked in a tailoring studio when she was a young girl. After the marriage, she was engaged in pottery making. Her students are the winners of the national competitions. However, the time has come and she is now involved in a new family business. We have three children, two daughters and one son and eight grandchildren. We can say that we are rich, we work here, everybody helps us. Grandchildren also help us. We live together, we work together all the time. <laughs> to revive the paper production, it was not an easy task. We worked hard day and night. We started this business at home. We worked with my son together. Daughters helped us too. However, in the end, we needed help. We started to employ workers. Now we have a big plant. Before that, we did not know that this paper was made in Samarkand. Zarif Akka came from Tashkent and said, now I want to work with paper, I want to revive its production. And he revived this business. Here we meet the guests. Welcome! Every hour tourist buses with guests from different countries come to the plant located at the Kolnagil. They are amazed at the simplicity and efficiency of the old technology, and paper souvenirs are in great demand. Large caravans passed from here. They carried paper across Europe to Russia and other countries of the world. This was the only road that connected China with Europe, and Samarkand was at the crossroads of the Silk Road. Here we build a housing. There will be a ceramic center because this is Conigal village. We will work with clay and we will conduct master classes. And as I said, we had a silk paper which went along the silk road. Here is the great silk road. You got acquainted with our plant and paper production. Now I have to go back to work. Thank you. Kazakh people are fond of horse riding. Even people who live in the big cities feel that they are the heirs of the great nomadic civilizations. They enjoy horse riding and feel childish affection for one of the most intelligent, clean and noble animals. Ancient people from Eurasia tamed the wild steppe horses five and a half thousand years ago. The archaeological finds of the Botai culture in the Akmola region and recent findings in the Turgai steppes, not far from Kostanai, can prove this fact. The memory of the ancestors passed between generations. Kazakh people enjoy the horse breeding and horse races. This is my horse. His name is Bars. He's three years old. These horses are bred at the Kostanai stud farm. Bars has already participated in the races. Now we are preparing for the next competition. Therefore, he must be in good physical shape. Come to me, Bars. Hey, Bars. Lazy head. We are going to the morning training. Bars is a naughty horse. We should go. Well, are you ready? Let's have a ride. 
People of the Kostana region are proud of Erlan Omarov. He is a Kazakh Kuresu wrestling world champion. Erlan Omarov is fond of horses, is a true Kazakh man. A few years ago, he decided to get involved in horseback riding, but not as a rider and jockey, but as a horse breeder. Now he's preparing his horses for the competitions. We are at the racetrack. We are preparing our horses for races. Before training, you need to make one circle for the warm up. We warmed up a little. And I want to introduce our riders. This is Mukagali on a horse named Bopai. And Manarbek, jockey, sits on a horse named Kogdawil. We always train horses together. And this is Egelik Aga on a horse named Emperor. He's a famous racehorse trainer. He won the main prizes, cars, more than once at the contests. Now in the Kundulukta, Jatu. Horses overcome a distance of two kilometers during daily trainings. First, as you saw, there was a warm-up, and then another circle. When the horses develop an average speed. National equestrian sports in Kazakhstan are experiencing a second birth. The horse race, traditionally called the Baiga, is held all over the country, and the prizes are really worth the price. Young boys are inspired by these prizes and start getting involved in horseback riding. Pedigree racehorses are bred in stud farms. Special coaches work with them. Igalik Karmanov has worked for more than 12 years in the Kostanai stud farm and knows firsthand about all the advantages of this profession. <laughs> Individual races with their own distance are arranged for two-year-old horses. There are other distances for three-year-old horses. And older horses are already participating in the Alaman Baiga with a distance of 20 to 25 kilometers each. Alaman Baiga has its own peculiarities. For example, such competitions are held at short distances in Russia and Europe. The Alman Baiga has longer distances. Therefore, horses must be tough, hardy, and sure-footed. After training, we decided to have a rest in nature. There are wonderful small woods with a clean air near Kostanai. I really like horses, love for them is in our blood. After training, we try to go out with friends to hunt and have a good rest in nature. I have been training horses for competitions the last three to four years. As a child, I lived in the village and our parents had horses. Then I was fascinated with them. When I moved to the city and started to play sports, I decided to continue the work, which is a part of the cultural heritage of our people. I came to the small wood on this horse. He's the representative of the anglo kostanai breed. Last year, he first performed in the horse racing and took second place. And he came fifth in the Alaman Baiga. I took part in tournaments uh, for Kazakhstan Boris National Cup for three times in a row. I represented the Kostana region. I was the champion of regional championships. Therefore, I decided to give my beloved horse the nickname Bars. This is a two-year-old thoroughbred horse. I recently brought her from Dagestan. 
There she performed at short distances. After a month and a half, we want her to participate in the Kununbaiga race. Her nickname is Bopai. I name her in honor of brave Bopai Hanim, one of the heroic women warriors of the Kazakhane, so that my horse will be famous throughout the steppe, be fearless and faster than the wind. This is Kogdawel. He's four years old. I brought him last year from the Kordai area near Taraz. Kogdawil is a descendant of famous Temujin horse. Last year he took part in the competitions, but unfortunately he was not quite ready and therefore could not take the prizes. But he will soon be in a great physical shape. That's why we train him every day. The horses also need love because they're living beings. From time to time I kiss them. Like this. And he likes it. Our ancestors believed that a horse is a sacred animal. In addition to the love for the national sports, Yerlan loves singing to the accompaniment of the folk instrument Dombra. Race and nature is a wonderful activity. This is my friend Kuderbeck, a talented poet and singer. He also likes to hunt. And after riding, we try to rest in nature, get a dombra, and listen to songs performed by Kuderbeck. I'm very pleased that we have Yerlan in Kostanai, who since childhood fell in love with horses and is now reviving national traditions. He not only prepares horses for races, but also he's a famous fighter. I like riding and take care of horses. For me, this is an opportunity to relax and think about the future. I want the horses trained by me to take prizes in the future. I like riding on horseback since my childhood. I started to ride on a pony. I participated in competitions and I won after the four years. I hope I will be able to compete for the first place this year along with Yerland's horses. Kostana is located on the bank of Tobol, in the main tributary of Irtish River. The city embankment is one of the popular places for Kostana residents and a place of meeting for good friends. Oh, hello. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Kalta is my best friend. He supports the development of equestrian sport in the country and is engaged in the cultivation of Taza steppe hound dogs. Yerlan is a very gifted person, a multifaceted person. He plays Dombra, sings, and he's the world champion in wrestling. He brought me to the equestrian sport, inspired me for training horses for the races. Yerlan is a true friend. I call him a Kazakh hero. Yerlan Umarov became the world champion in Kazakh Karesi in the weight category of 90 kilograms in October 2017. He impressed his fans with a great will to win. A Kazakh wrestler got a leg injury already in the first duel with a fighter from Poland, but this did not prevent him from rising to the very top of the contest. During training, he always had a will to win. So Yerlan became the world champion. He took part in the Kazakhstan Boris contest three times. He became the champion of Kazakhstan for several times. He showed the strength of his character, endurance and the desire for victory at the World Cup. 
he had ligament injury at the finals, but despite that, he overcame the pain, won the contest. Despite the fact that Yerlan is under 30 years, he's still engaged in wrestling, he's full of strength and energy. He's not only an outstanding sportsman, but also a wonderful person, he's always ready to help. Such patriots as Yerlan always keep traditions of the great steppe and its people. The Kazakh hero is going to participate in the Asian Games in the future, and his horses will win the first prizes soon.